Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Sorry I'm late. Um, as these things go, the uh, demo I had prepped for you all broke maybe an hour ago. So that's what I've been doing is fixing this demo. But I think we're in a good spot and we have a lot to learn and a lot to cover. So thank you, everybody, for hanging out in chat. Thanks for uh, saying where you're all from. I love seeing this part. I am from Las Vegas, Nevada, the city of lights and casinos. Um, to answer probably your question, I do not live in a casino, but if I did, maybe the pyramid I would pick. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think one of the other questions was, what is your favorite food? Is that right? Uh, ooh, that's a tough one. I don't know. Pizza's classic. I see pizza in the, in the list. Oh, what is your city's most famous food? I don't think Vegas has one, actually. Hey, Simon from Snapshooter. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Corey from Saskatchewan, Bradley, Kansas City. I love it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Barbecue. Awesome. I haven't had a good barbecue in a while. All right. So now that I have thoroughly calmed down, thanks to hanging out and chatting with you all. Gosh, live demos, huh? Let's get started. So today we are... In this DigitalOcean Tech Talk, hey, from St. Louis, UK, Israel, nice, Middle Earth. Can I visit? So in this Tech Talk, we are going to be talking about a technology called Livewire. And if you're a big fan of Laravel, uh, I am very much so. You have seen this kind of progression in the Laravel ecosystem of really great tools getting built up in the Laravel ecosystem. And one of the latest ones is Livewire. Now, hey from Greece. Now, Livewire is a really, really cool tool because it kind of changes the mental model of how we build applications. And I want to talk through a lot of this because you can't really get started in Livewire without talking about the problems that it solves and the way it changes how we code. And the thing is, the way it changes how we code is it kind of simplifies how we code, which I'm all for. I'm a big fan of that. So if you go to laravel-livewire.com, Livewire is uh, a way to build modern apps. Livewire is a full stack framework that makes building dynamic interfaces simple without leaving the comfort of Laravel. So this is the big part here. If you are a Laravel developer, um, then the big thing is you definitely like the Laravel ecosystem. You like Laravel Blade. You like all that stuff. But the way things have been moving with the Jamstack, uh, people have been saying, well, if you want fast applications, bring in JavaScript, bring in Vue, bring in React, bring in all this front-end stuff. And to a lot of people, they're like, you know what? I don't want to leave Laravel. I learned all of this stuff about Laravel, and that's where I'm at. But um, I've been jumping into the more of the JavaScript side, so it's been fun to come back to just Laravel. So what we're going to do here today is I have uh, Laravel... Pokemon app for you all, the thing that broke an hour ago. But <laughs> you're very welcome, Claudio. Thanks for joining. Bahia, Diego, welcome. So welcome to the Laravel Livewire webinar. We're going to do things three different ways. The Laravel way, which you're probably used to, the JavaScript way, which is going to take a little bit more coding, and we're going to see the Livewire way, which is uh, pretty quick, I would say. So by seeing the difference here, maybe you'll get a feel for how Livewire works. Maybe you'll want to add it to your own applications. And then maybe you'll want to join up, and they call it the tall stack these days, the tall stack, which is Tailwind, Alpine JS, which we can save for another webinar, um, Laravel, and Livewire. So with this stack, we should be able to build out applications pretty quickly and easily and quickly. So let's get started. I want to walk you through a little bit of the demo app that we have here. I tried not to do too much because I don't want to be all hand wavy with magic in front of you, right? So what we have is we have a routes folder, as you do in Laravel. We have web.php and super zoomed in, but let me zoom out. So we have route view welcome, which is the page you just saw. 
We have a Laravel way, we have a JavaScript way, and we have a live wire way that we are going to do. So give me two seconds. Let me set some stuff up. Hey, from Nigeria, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, and then I am going to share the GitHub repo with you all at the end of this so you can see how I did every single one. And let's get started. So the thing that I set up here before that we do this is we need data. So we need data to kind of show off everything. What I have done is I created a model. Where is my models app? Models Pokemon. And basically, this Pokemon model has name, image, and a cuteness rating. And what we do here is if I open up, I don't need this anymore. I can open up this right here. This is my database. I have all these Pokemon here. I got Charizard, Caterpie, Ponyta, Lickitung, Ditto, and Eevee. And their cuteness, they have random cuteness numbers. So that's it for our setup. So let's talk about the Laravel way. If you are using the Laravel way, you probably are going to go into your terminal and say, you know what? I want a controller. So I'm going to say artisan make controller. And I'm going to say uh, it's going to be a Pokemon controller. It's going to be a resource controller. And the model is going to be Pokemon. Question from the chat. Am I using Laravel 8? Yes, this is Laravel 8. Uh, where is Snorlax? Question from the chat. Snorlax was sleeping. He did not report today. So we have a new controller. And... Laravel kind of setup, this is going to be very familiar to you. You have the Pokemon controller. You have an index where you say, okay, well, I want to return. Well, all Pokemon is equal to Pokemon. And I'm going to import that. Import the right thing? Yeah, it did. The models. Oh, it already did, of course. Um, all. And then you're going to say return, view, and we're going to call it resources, views. Pokemon Laravel. And then I'm going to also pass in data, all Pokemon, and all Pokemon. Uh, and let me put my colons in the right spots. And this is the problem with coding when everything's so zoomed in. <laughs> okay. So that should be good enough right there. So that's your index. That's how you show everything. So now you go into your view file right here, Pokemon Laravel. And I have some stubbed out HTML right here. And then in here, in our body tag, we're just going to say for each, uh, all Pokemon as Pokemon. And we're going to do end for each. And this is blade tags. So we can just write in H2 Pokemon name. And then also I'm going to do an image for source is equal to uh oh, Pokemon, what a hard word to type. <laughs> Pokemon image, I think is what it was. All right, so let's see how that looks in our app. I'm going to shrink VS Code a little bit and shrink this so I can click over. I'm going to go here. Or if we're not found, I need to create our web route. So let's go here. And we're going to say route resource. Pokemon, and then it's going to go to the Pokemon controller. Okay, so that is going to be good enough to show off our Pokemon, which is here they are, gigantic. <laughs> and they're going in a row, which is nice. Look at Eevee, giant. Good old Pokemon demos, Stefane. <laughs> My favorite uh, API to use just because you can get some fun images. Okay, so here they all are. Let's shrink them because that isn't the most flattering for our Pokemon. So I'm going to go here and just give them a class of width is maybe 10. I'm using Tailwind for styling. There we go. Okay, so let's say we wanted to update each one's cuteness level. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to add a P tag for their cuteness, and I'm going to say cute Pokemon. Cuteness, cuteness, and then I'm going to add a button, and since I don't like how they are, grid, grid columns of three, 
four maybe and gap of five. And this is a little tailwind work. So trying to keep the styling to a minimum, but also not have the ugliest site, right? Close that div. Boat. Cuteness. Okay. What we're doing here is we have a form or a button right here. And we are going to add a button here so that you can say vote for the cuteness level for each one. And let's handle this in Laravel. We'll do this pretty quickly. And then we're going to show a JavaScript way. And then we'll get right into the Livewire way. So don't worry. We're going to get into Livewire pretty quickly. But overall, you would have a form, right? You would have a, a um, method is a post. You would have action is the Pokemon. And then you would have the Pokemon dot id and then you would do here you do csrf you would do at method is put and notice how much stuff i'm already writing just to update our um our form i need to close this form out huh form there we go and just because it is ugly on its own py let's go p3 Background blue at 400 and rounded corners. And maybe text is blue 50. Okay. Cool. So if we vote cuteness here, we have to go update it on the back end so that we go into our Pokemon controller. We go all the way down to update. And we say, hey, Pokemon, um, just increment the cuteness level. And that Pokemon or probably return a redirect to the Pokemon Pokemon this is getting sloppy huh Pokemon Pokemon oh just Pokemon all, all Pokemon okay let's see I am going to do this. Why am I using uh, action URL instead of action route? I'm just trying to speed through this demo as fast as I can. So let's just not do those right now. So vote cuteness increases to six. Vote cuteness increases to five. And that's how you do it with Laravel, right? So there's a lot of this back and forth talk between the back end PHP, the front end blade um, HTML template, right? Uh, Kevin, you're absolutely right. You should use route. But for this demo, I just want to go quickly. Uh, redirect back. You're right, Sweetie. That is much better than what I just did. <laughs> OK. Awesome. Awesome. Or just back. All right. The thing you love about Laravel is everything gets simpler and simpler in the code, right? OK. So let's just close that out. Close that out. We have done the Laravel way, which is create a form create your resource controller, and then handle the routes and redirects and stuff like that. So let's talk about the Larav or the JavaScript way, route. Let's do a view, JavaScript. And we're just going to do a Laravel JavaScript view that I have right over here. Laravel, oh, Pokemon JavaScript. Pokemon JavaScript. So to do this, we would need an API that we can access data from. So I'm going to go over here and say artisan make controller Pokemon API controller. And we probably are going to forward slash or backslash. I always forget. Um, API model is Pokemon. Forward slash or backslash. Forward slash works. Okay. So what you do here right, is you go over here. And I know I'm speeding through this. I just really want to get to the Livewire stuff. If you are interested in how to make an API, we have another tech talk that I've done previously about building Laravel APIs. So you can definitely watch that one. And here, I'm just going to go with return Pokemon all. Hey, bit by bit, welcome. So I'm going to do Pokemon all here. And then you can just see that if I go to forward slash API, well, let's do duplicate this tab. And I'm going to Pokemon API slash Pokemon. There we go. 
So we have our JSON data all here as um, you would expect from our API. Right on, Brian. Yeah, we should put a link to that API talk uh, down below in the description for this. And if you are wondering, oh, the link is there. Awesome. The recording of this will live on this YouTube channel, and uh, you can visit it whenever you want. OK, so we did the Laravel way. And then I'm not really going to do the full JavaScript way. It is a lot of typing. But if I go here, and I go down to resources, Pokemon JavaScript. Um, so what really matters here is this JavaScript area. And I'm going to say, give ideas app. I'm going to say const app is equal to new view. And I'm using view for this element. I'm going to say, hey, target that app element right there. And then we're going to say data is all Pokemon is null to start. And then actually, we'll just do an empty array to start. You create your methods. And uh, notice how I'm typing a lot already. Get Pokemon. And this is going to be fetch from the API slash Pokemon. Dot then res, res.json. Dot then data is equal to uh, this dot all Pokemon is equal to Pokemon is data. And then on mounted, you got to say, hey, go get all the Pokemon. And I don't know why my formatter is all weird with the commas. Please don't get mad at me about that. <laughs> my VS Code theme is monokai.pro. And my font is Cascadia Code, if you're interested. Uh, my editor is VS Code, and I'm using uh, a PHP extension called IntelliFence. I found it to be my favorite of the PHP extensions. OK, so if I go here and go to the home page, let's click on the JavaScript way. Notice here there is nothing happening. So I got to go up here and say, OK, now let's say v or div v for uh, all Pokemon. I always confuse my syntax with the blade way. Pokemon in all Pokemon key is Pokemon.id. Notice how much typing we're already doing. Um, let's do Pokemon. All right, what am I doing? Pokemon dot name. All right, let's see if that works. There we are. OK, so there's our faces. Let's also do our image tag just so we can do that. And uh, we're doing this all in Pokemon dot image class with is 10. And I'll close that out. So this is the way you do it um, in the JavaScript way, right? You basically have a separate front end, you have a back end API, and you have them merge and talk to each other through API calls like this. Now I can take this a step further and say like update cuteness, uh, like we did for the Laravel way, but I don't want to go into too much depth on that. Let's jump into Livewire. Uh, any questions on the Laravel way and the JavaScript way and kind of how they work together? OK, let me get set up for the Livewire way. And if you have any questions, please do pop them into the chat. I'm happy to answer them. OK, cool. Let's move in. So notice all of this typing I have done here on the JavaScript way. Let me open up that uh, Pokemon Laravel blade file. All of the typing I have done here with this form, the CSRF, this method put, and this button. But also, the Laravel way refreshes the page, right? And that's kind of one of the things we're trying to avoid if we're trying to build out these modern experiences for our users. 
Thanks, Brian Sanchez. We are kind of blazing through. We built uh, two different ways in about 15 minutes. Okay. So let's talk about Livewire. Let's go back. I'm going to go to the Livewire way. 404 not found. Let's go to our web. And I'm going to close everything else out. Let's forget about everything else and say route, view, Livewire. And we are going to do the Pokemon Livewire blade file. Hey, Christian, what's up? Okay, so we're starting the Livewire way. We have a route view, Livewire, Pokemon, Livewire. And then in our blade file, which let me open that up, Pokemon, Livewire, here, it has nothing. Nothing in here yet. Oh, let's talk about installing Livewire. There's a couple different things you have to do. And if I go to the Livewire docs, and go to the docs over here. I'm way zoomed in. All you got to do is Composer require Livewire, Livewire. So copy that. Go into your terminal, paste that in. I've already done that, so I'm going to skip it. And then you go here, and you say, all right, well, let's add the Livewire styles in. And this is Livewire 2 for that question in chat. The most modern Livewire we have. And I'm going to say Livewire styles, and I'm putting that right under the Tailwind styles. And then let's go back over here and say Livewire scripts. So I'm going to copy that. Come over here and say Livewire scripts right before the closing body tag. And that is the setup for Livewire. Awesome, right? Um, install Jetstream to use Livewire. Jetstream uses Livewire. I think there's an inertia version as well. But nope, Livewire is its own thing. OK, so create a component. Let's create a component. And I'm going to call this. Let's close that out, clear that out. Artisan, make Livewire. And we're going to call it cool. So since this is our first component in this project, it's going to say, hey, would you like to share some love starring the repo? I have already done so. I think this is a fun tactic to get more stars on GitHub. So I did no. Uh, I already did. Come on, Caleb. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So there's that. Let's see what Livewire just created for us. So Livewire creates two files for us. We go into app, HTTP, Livewire, and we have a cool.php. And then we go into resources, views, Livewire, and we have a cool.blade. So between these two files, we now have a Livewire component. And this can be seen as just a normal component. Hi there, everybody in chat. And I'll save that. It's cool. He does uh, random quotes. I'm going to go over here and refresh the live wire away. Nothing in here yet. Cool. And what I'm going to do here is start showing you a couple of the live wire features. The cool thing about a Livewire component is this the PHP file corresponds directly to this blade file. So if I go over here and I created a property called public, um, and then I say like message, and go over here and just bind message as you would with your blade tags, the message should show right here. But message is not there yet, so I can go up here and say message is equal to hi there are super cool. Okay, so that's right there. Oh, we need to uh, pass that in for some reason. Got that backwards. <laughs> Let's drop that. And I want to show you something. Actually, I got ahead of myself. So this is message is equal to cool. Five spaces. <laughs> My Livewire component is not doing what I want it to do. Give me two seconds. Sorry about that. Live coding, huh? Um, oh, of course. 
Bobby, thank you. What a doof. All right, all this is working out just fine. And we have built our component. I always forget this step. But over here, nothing in here yet. Yeah, of course, nothing's going to show because we need to add it. So <laughs> every time it gets me. So let's go live wire and let's say cool. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, everybody in chat for letting me know. OK, so now that the component has been called, has been added, refresh. Uh, Hi there, everybody in chat. Super cool. And the super cool was that message from our um, PHP file. So let's go ahead, drop this. And you could do Livewire cool, or you could use the helper Livewire cool like that. So there we go. So that'll show twice. <laughs> OK. So. Here we go. We have our Livewire cool. Let's start working with this. And I want to show you uh, a little bit of how Livewire does things and then talk about a little bit of the philosophy behind Livewire because I think it's such a fun topic to talk about. So here we have this message is super cool. And let's go over here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an input type is text. And just like you would see in a view tutorial or in a React tutorial, there's a lot of fun stuff when you start getting this two-way data binding where an input binds itself to a variable. Well, to do this, you say wire model, and you say message. So this right here is going to bind itself to the uh, to that variable. And I'll show you how this works. Let's go over here. Refresh. We have this. We're going to say, whoa. Cool. So you get the value of this two-way data binding. We have wired a variable to an input. And similar how you would see things in JavaScript, right? But listen, there was no uh, page refresh, as in it was in the JavaScript or in the Laravel way. So let's go here, inspect. And I am going to show a couple of different things off. So if I open this network tab, let's look at what in the world Livewire is doing. And really, what Livewire is doing is sending a network request to an API endpoint and saying, hey, Laravel, can you give me new data? It gets new data back, and then it re-renders this section over here. If I could highlight it, there. So if I said, hi, and I go to my XHR requests, which are AJAX requests, um, I go here to this cool. So headers. I'm going to go all the way down here. And this updates is what's really, really interesting. This updates uh, property right here. Let me zoom in for you all. Is that large enough? Cool. So this updates property is sync input, name is message, value is high. So if I said um, Uburato, and then I say that, it goes down here, and it passes in that as Uburato. And you'll notice that it does it for a kind of, it already debounces itself, but it is pretty quick. So if I go down here, you can see Ubura. And then on the final one, it, it does the full word right there. Cool. So basically, what it's doing is it's sending a network request. And let me show you the API is slash livewire slash message message slash cool. And livewire did that automatically for us. Ignatius, that's a very good question. Um, it could possibly render slower with uh, slower internet connection. That's just the nature of these AJAX requests. But Livewire tries to be efficient because all it's really sending in is that array right there. And then if we look at our response, our preview of response, it actually sends back HTML. So it gives you this HTML and it compares it to this HTML right here. So if you are talking about Vue or React, Vue and React, you get data, and then you say, hey, let me create a brand new template on the client side in JavaScript, and then let me inject it into my browser. So what this is doing is it's actually sending back full HTML from the server and saying, hey, can you compare this HTML 
to the HTML I'm giving you and then update it accordingly if anything changed. So there's that. Here's this input. Hi, everybody in chat. And then here's the new thing that changed. So if I change this to Craigy right here, you would see down here, effects, HTML, and Craigy. So then that's kind of the magic of LiveWire. It makes an API request. It gets new full formed HTML that was rendered on PHP instead of rendered on the client. And then it just updates the view. So the other thing about this is if you go to github.com, GitHub actually uses this all over the place. If you do an inspect element here and you go to like your console, sorry, your network tab, and you click on this main right here, it actually spits out the HTML for you to um, update this thing right here. So actually, GitHub uses this technique a lot. That's kind of the one of the inspirations for Livewire. Let's see, Eric, there is probably a debounce. Yes, there is. If I go back to my code, you could do model.debounce, and then you could set a time on it, or you could even do that lazy. So it won't send the network request until after you click outside of the um, thing right here. <clears throat> OK, so let's take this a step further. That's a cool component right there. But I want to do a little bit more with it, right? we want to do something with our Pokemon that we've created. So there's Livewire Cool. Let's create a new component. Artisan make Livewire, and we're going to call this search Pokemon. And notice it created the PHP file for that, and it created the blade template for that. So let's go up into our search Pokemon here. And then let's go up into our search Pokemon here. And I will make sure this time, because I know I'm terrible at it, Live Liar, <laughs> search Pokemon. There. So now we can't forget that step. Otherwise, we'll look not smart. And then basically what we're going to do here is I'm going to create a public property called query. And it's going to start as blank. And then in the render, we're going to say, hey, all Pokemon is equal to Pokemon, where, name, like, I always confuse my syntax here. Um, let's do this. This query. And we're saying get. Okay. So this component is responsible for searching for Pokemon. So we're just saying, hey, go search through the Pokemon get all Pokemon, and then pass that over to the view or the component side of this thing. All right. So we have the ability to show data here. Let's go double check that we're working on it. Uh, refresh here. Nothing is going to show, and that's because we have not updated our components template yet. A lot of moving parts. So if you are wondering where I'm jumping to, it's because I am also trying to find all the moving parts. So we have all Pokemon here. We can say for each. All Pokemon uh, as Pokemon. I always confuse my view syntax and my blade syntax. Pokemon name. So we have our name right here, Charizard, Caterpie, Ponyta. Uh, and then let's go ahead and give our images source is equal to Pokemon image. Make sure we give a class width of 10. I don't want them, I don't want Ponyta to be gigantic again. Okay. So there they all are. And let's go to our template again, and then we really want to find a way to search for these components, right? So we're going to say input type is text, and then we're going to wire the model is query. So it's a mental shift for how I'm used to doing things. I'm used to the JavaScript way where you're creating a Laravel API, create the view front end or React front end, 
and then connect it to the API um, and kind of store all that stuff in the JavaScript side. So with Livewire, you do have to make a mental shift. And I see a little bit of this conversation happening in chat is when do you do, when do you rely on kind of server state like this is because the state of our query is on the server versus when do you rely on local state in your client um, that doesn't require AJAX requests and then you use something like Alpine.js or, um, yeah, Alpine.js. So that's a very good question and something that you kind of learn as you start building out more of these Laravel tall stack apps. Um, but what I'm going to do here is just show off this working real quick. So we have this input wired to the query variable. We have all Pokemon as Pokemon, looping through them. So if I just type in, where's my input there? If I type in C, it will automatically search for uh, the Pokemon that have the letter C in their name. So if I did CA, Caterpie automatically comes up. And if I did like Ponyta, Bear, that comes up as well. And look how little we had to write to build out this search form, right? Let me close that. I don't need that anymore. All we had to do was stick to the blade temp templates we already know, create our input, and then just say, hey, you are bound to the query variable. And then Livewire took care of just saying, OK, well, I'm going to check this component here on the PHP side. I'll see any changes that happen. And I'll just re-render the front end browser. Uh, Brian Sanchez and Francisco talking about purely server-side rendering. That is true. The, the first way I did it, the Laravel way, this way right here, the resource way, is the fully server-side rendered way, which means every time you reload the page, PHP on the back end renders the page and then serves you the HTML for that page, right? The JavaScript way is not the server-side rendered way. So if I went to JavaScript, and this is this gets into a conversation about what the biggest benefit of Livewire is, right? One of the biggest benefits. So if I go here, and did you all know that Chrome DevTools has a command palette? Command Shift P, disable JavaScript. And I go here and refresh again. Notice that none of our page works. So it's not server-side rendered, it's client-side rendered on the front end. So you get the benefits of real time, but you don't get the benefits anymore of server-side rendering. So you lose that benefit. So what we do here is put enable JavaScript. Now that we have JavaScript, everything works. And I know that Googlebot and Google's SEO team says that they can parse JavaScript pages now. Um, it's Probably true. There's a lot of big sites that do it. I'm a big fan of just saying, hey, let's server-side render it. It's faster for our clients and pretty easy enough. OK, so what I'm excited about here is that Next.js, we've done webinars, tech talks on Next.js, is that you can server-side render and also hydrate on the client. So you can do server-side rendering and then JavaScript magic on the front end. This is exactly what Laravel Livewire does except it does it the Laravel way. So if I come over here, right, we have JavaScript, and I go to Livewire. So let's go to this Livewire route right here. Let me go ahead and say disable JavaScript. Check it out. Our page still works. Now, will this work if I try to type in? No, it won't, because it relies on JavaScript to do that AJAX request to update our view, but our first view is rendered, no JavaScript needed. So that's kind of the benefit right there. So which one is faster for performance? If you're talking about first touch performance, like first page load, the Livewire way is faster because the browser just has to render HTML. The JavaScript way, the browser has to process all of your JavaScript, make the API call, render its own template, and then inject it into the DOM. So a lot more steps the JavaScript way. Um, not to say that it's wrong, right? It's just different. 
Uh, Gage says, what happens if the client loses internet connection? That's similar to what just happened here. I disabled the uh, JavaScript. It wasn't able to make the Ajax request to update the template. So that's kind of the same tactic here is that it wouldn't have the chance to go get new data. All right, uh, the question I want to talk on is, is it better to use Livewire or use Vue? Uh, that's a very good question. I think, I'm, I'm personally a very big fan of server-side rendering the first page because it is faster. Uh, it is better globally as, as far as speed, and I think it's better for SEO. That might be a hot take, I don't know. But is the benefit of doing it the view way is that you are one, you're building an API, which your API, you can use multiple times. You can use it for a mobile app. You can use it for a front end app, um, any sorts of clients. The live wire way is really good if you want fast first render, which is really good for blogs. And then you want to add in some functionality and live wire components around your site. Um, but honestly, I think they both can get the job done, right? I think that the benefit is if you love the Laravel ecosystem, if you know um, Blade and you know your templates like that, you love Blade components, and you don't want to learn Vue or React, or you want to, you don't want to get into that JavaScript land. Livewire is a great solution for you. But if you do like the APIs plus JavaScript way, uh, then go that way, right? It's really use the tool that you know currently, but if you want to stay in the Laravel side, Livewire is a great choice. Let's see, Switty, can you do disabled? I'm not entirely sure, but I can check. Um, let's see. So Livewire is, is, you can see Livewire more as not just a real-time framework, right? It's, it's not like it has an open connection between backend and frontend. What it does, it's a framework to, to automatically make API calls and to update the frontend. So all of this work that we did in Pokemon JavaScript, all of this work right here, where we go and get the Pokemon, and then we inject it into the DOM, all of that is handled by Livewire automatically. So it's kind of a shortcut to doing it the JavaScript way. Okay, so one last thing I want to do is to... Uh, <laughs> let's do this quickly is to show the way that we can update that cuteness number using Livewire. So I want to get through this pretty quickly, and then we'll do Q&A at the end. We are coming up on time. And thanks so much for being here, everybody. Thanks for letting me be late when I showed up earlier. OK, so we have Livewire. Let's do Artisan Make Livewire Show Pokemon. So we're going to show a singular Pokemon, right? And then let me just double check my notes here. I don't want to get anything wrong, especially in the last like five minutes. Recency effect, right? <laughs> OK. OK, so I have now, I can drop the search Pokemon, drop this one. And then here, I'm going to do Livewire show Pokemon. Pass a Pokemon into this. You go Pokemon is equal to Pokemon. Um, and let me double check my syntax there too, because yep, it uh, does require that, and then you can you have to give it a key for Pokemon ID, and we're gonna do a for each here, for each all Pokemon as Pokemon, and for each. But since it did this all Pokemon as Pokemon, that means it needs all Pokemon first. So I'm doing the loop outside of the 
uh, Livewire component. You could do it in the component, but I want to show you if you have a page with data already on it, what it looks like to pass that in. So we're going to change this to a get. And we're going to say a function, uh, return view like that. And then I'm going to close that out. And here we're going to say all Pokemon, Pokemon. So this is kind of using Laravel's blade syntax, but also using Livewire's way of doing things. All Pokemon is equal to Pokemon all. So let's go into our show Pokemon. And let's go into our show Pokemon blade. So this is a new component we just made, right? One for the PHP side of things, two for the blade side of things. And I'm sorry I'm moving quickly. I did not gauge time correctly. OK. So basically, we want to say, hey, you are going to have Pokemon. And we can actually type hint it as a Pokemon model, which is cool. And then we're going to say increment. Yes. And then we're going to say this Pokemon increment goodness. I want to show you what it's like to listen for an event on the front end and then just update it in the back end. And then that will update our UI automatically. So what we're going to do here is say, let's do an H2 for Pokemon name. Let's do a P tag for the Pokemon cuteness, cuteness. And we are going to do Q&A right after this, so please put your questions in the chat, and then I'll uh, jump through them after I'm done with this one. And then let's do a button. And let's do, um, I don't need Blade there, vote up. And let's give it a little bit of Tailwind classes, P3, background blue at 300. And 400 text blue. Okay. At 50. Okay, let's double check what this looks like. Here we go. We have Charizard, Caterpie, Ponyta. So we're going to say, hey, vote up, right? But it won't work because it, all it's doing is refreshing this page. And we never wired it up to that back end method that we created. So we're going to say, hey, um, wire, submit equal to increment cuteness. There we go. So what we can also do is this is actually going to refresh the page still, just like an HTML form would. You can go over here and say dot prevent, similar to how you would in view. If I go over here and I click this, here it's automatically upvoting each of these, and it's making the Ajax request call. And you can see down here, show Pokemon. And I'll kind of zoom in on each one. Headers, let's go all the way down. Updates, call method is the type, and it calls for increment cuteness right there. How cool is that? So that's a way you can quickly build that two-way functionality where it updates the back end of the database. And I actually had the database up, but we never really looked at it. But this right here, wire, submit, prevent, Increment cuteness, and then over here, we just did, hey, increment cuteness right there. So you're calling backend methods from your front end, which is amazing. All right, that's my spiel today. Um, let me... So I'm going to get to comments in a second. Twitter.com, Chris underscore underscore Sev. If you have any more questions for me or if you want to see more topics... Uh, find me on Twitter, Chris underscore underscore Sev, and um, we'll talk about the next Tech Talks. I know I still have to do the Strappy Authentication one. We can do more Livewire stuff. We can do Alpine JS. Um, but yeah, let me know your comments in the chat right here, and we'll read through them as we end up and close out this webinar. So let's see. Oh, man, I ran out of water halfway through that. Okay, let's see. Uh, let me. 
let me get through some of this stuff. For huge, complicated sites, isn't a front-end plus Laravel API approach more scalable in the wrong long run from Arjun? Um, I think it depends on the app because if you can build a large-scale application with the Laravel way where you're having forms, it's making post requests or put requests, it's updating the browser, that's possible, right? And you can also do it with the JavaScript way where you're doing just Ajax requests. So why, uh, I think Livewire should be able to handle a good workload because really it is just a way for us to quickly make API calls and update our front end. <laughs> Aries, welcome, even though you're late, welcome. This will be recorded, so you can definitely check out our live wire fun stuff. Let's see. Just jumping through the chat. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us today. I know there's a lot of places you could spend your online time. Brian Sanchez, spa with live wire is possible. Yes, it is. And you can stay in your live. Laravel, I keep mixing up the two words. You can stay in your Laravel ecosystem, right? The big benefit, I think, is no context switching. Like, you see how I got confused with my for each Pokemon as Pokemon or Pokemon in Pokemon between Vue and Laravel Blade? That problem doesn't exist because you're not switching over to JavaScript. For the Q&A part, would I personally use Livewire for small projects or would I prefer to stick to JavaScript way? I thought about this a lot for myself. And I think for projects where I am working by myself, I think Laravel Livewire would be a fantastic solution because I personally know Laravel and I like the Laravel kind of syntax. For projects where I am working with somebody else that doesn't know Laravel, to teach them Livewire and to get them up to speed on how Laravel and Livewire work, um, probably not. If, if they know JavaScript, I'm probably going to stick to, I'll build the Laravel API. You and I can build the front end on the other side. So it really depends on the team, I think. But if it's for a personal project, I really like the Laravel ecosystem. I like that we can bring in Jetstream um, and the new Spark. How exciting is that? To build out a SaaS pretty quickly. So. That's kind of my two cents on it. It depends on the team. Um, Jan Cruft, is the form needed? I don't think so. You could just go over here, uh, delete this thing, delete this thing, and just say wire, click, increment, cuteness. And that should work. Oh, and let me refresh. Yeah. Yep, so that still works. Uh, me, I just semantically like having the form. If I'm submitting anything, I just like having the form there. But not fully necessary, I think. Where are we here? And here. Okay. You want to see Laravel API and Sanctum? So uh, Laravel auth, we can definitely do that. That is a big topic, a uh, very important topic as well. Oh, right on. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Apoorv. I try for these <laughs> alpine js would be cool awesome can i use laravel without knowing J javascript from craigie yes absolutely you can um if you don't know javascript that's kind of a big benefit to livewire you don't have to touch the javascript side of things um i've been playing around with building out let me zoom in here this is too tiny I've been playing around with building out uh, like a Slack clone, and I think Livewire could do it pretty easily. Thanks, Ignatius. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Where did I get these Minecraft panels looking looking panels on the back wall? It is Insta Instagram ads got me, and they're really good, scarily. 
but uh, it's a company called feltright.com. And I really like their name, Feltright. All right, let's see. Laravel API or Strapi API from Jan Cruft. I think for, and this is because I need to dive more into Strapi. I know Laravel pretty well. I used it to build a, a website called scotch.io. Strapi, I think, can do a great job of it. Um, but if I need stuff like payments, I'll probably reach for Laravel Spark. Uh, if I need stuff like a administration panel uh, for my users, Jetstream is a great tool. Uh, also, Laravel Invoker is a tool that gives us kind of that strappy UI to design out our Laravel APIs. You kind of like have this dashboard where you can create your models and databases all from the dashboard, which is similar to Strapi. And if you are interested, we can do a tech talk on Invoker as well. There's so many topics. Let's see, where are we at? Livewire seems easy to code with less code. That is a great point, uh, Johns, Jones. I agree. And any tool that kind of, you might call it magic, and that's fair. But I don't really want to write the code where I make an API call, update my uh, HTML again. It's just tedious work that I don't think has much value to my end users. Let's see. Bootstrap select. I'm not entirely sure, actually. I've never really done that. Um, I imagine you would have to, because when it updates the front end, it probably removes all of the event listeners. You would probably have to find like a Laravel Livewire specific tool. Um, and I guess that's the, that's the thing with having such a young project. Not young, but a newer project is you have to wait for that ecosystem around it of components and stuff like that to get built up. Uh, Chris Martinez, are we doing these every week at the same time? I think mine are every two weeks, but we do have these every week. And yes, subscribe to our YouTube channel for when these go live. I'm usually on a cadence of every two weeks. These take a little bit of prep, so <laughs> every week might crush. Right on. Thanks, Kevin. Best payment API for P Laravel uh, from Jones. Laravel Spark uses Paddle or Stripe. Both of those are fantastic tools. Can you nest components from Kevin Johnson? Yes, you can. On the Laravel docs, definitely check them out. Here's Quick Start. Nesting components is right here. So they did a great job with the docs as uh, they probably took a lot of inspiration from the official Laravel docs, which are fantastic. Let's see, where are we? Vela, you're very welcome. Right on. All right, what time is it? 9.06, we're over, but the Q&A was very fun. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, best practices with Laravel and Livewire. That is a great topic for another tech talk. You know what we could do? We could build out a, like, a full-sized app with Livewire, and then we could talk about best practices as we build. Scotch footer, invalid Twitter link. I thought I fixed that. Oh, well. Let's see. Thank you, everybody. Craigie, yeah, I've seen all of your, well, most, all the messages I've seen. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Felipe. Let's wrap this up. Ivelo, thank you. Brandon, Invoker vid. Yeah, I'm very excited about Invoker. Jason, Inertia. Yeah, we can definitely do an Inertia one. I definitely want to explore the entire Laravel ecosystem. Inertia, Alpine, uh, Livewire, Invoker, all that fun stuff. Security, uh, Jetstream, Spark, Nova, Horizon. <laughs> but, yeah. So subscribe to the channel. We'll do a lot more of those. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And uh, happy coding, everybody. See you later.